In the gospel passages, we often see that Jesus placing emphasis on faith and dependence on the Lord. And why is it so? It is because when we place our faith and trust in the Lord, we are then able to be humble and we are able to be within our limits. Otherwise, sometimes there is this tendency in order to think that we are self-sufficient and this can in a way prevent us from doing good to others. It can also break our relationship with the Lord. And therefore, in today's readings, we find that very element of faith and trust in the Lord, in how the Lord saves us, how the Lord protects us at every step of the way. The Lord is always there guiding us with His grace and always protecting us in whatever we do. And therefore, in today's first reading, St. Paul will tell about his experience wherein nobody came in order to testify or nobody was there on his side for the defense. Similarly, he says that there was a coppersmith who gave him a lot of trouble, who resisted his teachings, but he was not disheartened because he knew that the Lord was there with him and the Lord reached out to him and protected him. Similarly, in today's gospel passage, we see that Jesus sends out the 72 disciples with instructions. And here we see that they have to follow these instructions and in a way live a life of simplicity and humility. And we are later told that they came back with joy and happiness at what had happened to them. And as we read today's gospel passage, will come across this phrase where Jesus says, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. What does Jesus mean by that? And how does it apply to each and every one of us? Well, let's find that out during today's episode of Tea Time with the Word. But before we can begin our reflection, let us take a look at the readings for Tuesday in the 29th week in Ordinary Time. Today's first reading is from the second letter to Timothy, chapter 4, verses 10 to 17b. And the Gospel is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 to 9. And in a way, today's readings will focus on this element of trust and faith in the Lord. In today's first reading, St. Paul tells Timothy all the troubles, all the difficulties that he had to face on his mission. Now in those days, it was very difficult for people who were preaching the word of God because there was a lot of opposition in certain places. And we see that in spite of this opposition, in spite of these difficulties, there were these disciples who were able to withstand all that persecution, all those difficulties. They were able to persevere and they were able to spread the good news to the world. If they had to resist, if they had to get scared and not do their work, we would have had a completely different picture today. And therefore, we see that it is the grace of the Lord that gives strength and courage in order to face challenges in life. And St. Paul clearly illustrates that in the first reading. He says that there was a man, a coppersmith, who did not uh, listen to his preaching, who resisted, who gave him a lot of trouble. Similarly, he said, during the verdict, there were nobody to testify on behalf of Paul. But then he says that the Lord provided. The Lord was there to save and protect him. Which goes to show us that sometimes we may feel completely lost. But still we are told to have faith and hope in the Lord. Because the Lord will provide for us at all occasions. Similarly, when we come to today's gospel passage, we see that Jesus sends out the 72 disciples. The disciples are sent on mission 
and they are given clear instructions. Do not carry no bag, no money, no sandals. In this way, Jesus wants them to be dependent on God for everything. In this way, we see that wherever the disciples go, they are able to experience the mercy and the compassion of the Lord. And through their works, they are also able to touch the lives of others. They are told to enter the village. And the first thing, when they go to a household, they are to give peace. And therefore, this is something which is quite lacking in today's world. In today's world, we tend to be individualistic, we tend to be self-centered, only worried about our own selves. And therefore, this care and concern for others is kind of lost. Similarly, the disciples are also told that they are to go out and preach the good news, help the sick, heal them and do all the good works possible. And all this he says that the Lord will give the grace so, and the courage so that you all will be able to do whatever you all are supposed to do. And then we see Jesus says, the harvest is great but the laborers are few. Now who are the laborers? Well, you and I. In fact, everyone who is born on this earth is a laborer in the vineyard of the Lord. And therefore Jesus says, the kingdom of God has come near you. We see that towards the end of the gospel, the disciples, once they heal the people, they tell them that indeed the kingdom of God has come. This is what it is supposed to be. Everyone reaching out to others, helping and reflecting, practicing the gospel values. And therefore, here we see that by saying the kingdom of God has come near you, Jesus is trying to tell them that indeed when we do such things, we are able to radiate the love of God to the world around us. In this way, the kingdom will consist of people who do not discriminate, people who do not divide on the basis of religion, caste, etc. In this way, we see that the disciples were able to achieve all that because they had faith and trust in the Lord. Similarly, all of us are also called to have the same faith and trust in the Lord. Whenever we face challenges in life, we are told that we need to depend on the Lord for He will provide, He will guide us. And therefore, as we reflect on today's readings, let us pray for the grace that we may be able to place our faith and trust in the Lord and allow Him to work in and through us so that together we may help Him in building the kingdom of God on earth. Amen.